Hey everybody, this video is going to be an introduction to the Glasgow Coma Scale, also called the GCS, uh, which has kind of started to fall out of favor in recent years and it's been replaced by new scales, but uh, the GCS is still widely used, so we're going to cover it in this video. Um, it's used a lot by EMS personnel, uh, ER doctors, that sort of thing. Um, and really, it's not necessarily a huge diagnostic uh, tool or advantage, but um, it's used to kind of track patients um, through their treatment to see if they are deteriorating or improving. It's also used just to give you kind of a one, uh, one second snapshot of what to expect when you see this patient. So you, you have these medics out on an ambulance who can call in to an ER physician and say, we have a GCS of... Uh, you know, let, let's say eight, and that doctor then is going to have a pretty good idea of what to expect when the patient makes it to the ER. Um, you know, obviously there's tons of other scenarios where this would be useful, like the IC or whatever, but anyways, Glasgow Coma Scale and easy ways to remember it, right? Um, Glasgow Coma Scale is a 15-point scale, and it's got three different parts. Um, memorizing the three different parts is going to be the hardest, the hardest thing to do here. Um, First, I, I have these in a certain order. The first part is eyes, then it's verbal, and then it's motor. And I just remember that EVM. Let me take out this here. Eyes, verbal, motor, EVM. And then uh, since you have that, if you just remember EVM is the big thing I remember here, because then you just remember there are four different points to the eyes, five, to the verbal and six to the motor. So you kind of have this nice, you know, stair step progression, four, five, six points awarded for EVM. I don't know how you're gonna remember that, but EVM is the hard part to remember. Um, so <clears throat> there are different uh, point values for each of these categories here, and the goal is to get a score somewhere between three and 15 points. Now I'm going to put another point here with eight. Now three is, and this is a very common test question, this is very high yield, three is the lowest that you can go, right? So um, like three would be a deceased person. So <clears throat> a three would be a one in each of these three categories. It'd be the lowest, the most um, deceased-like characteristic in, of the eyes, the most deceased-like characteristic of verbal or motor. That's a three. So you cannot get a zero on the Glasgow Coma Scale. The minimum you can get is a three. Um, that's a common test question. Now, conversely, the highest they can get is over here, and that's a 15. And a, a 15, I'll write these numbers up here on top. might be easier for you to see. A 15 is going to be like your normal, healthy adult patient. So whereas three is the lowest, 15 is the highest. Remember that we had four points here, five points here, and six points there. That equals 15. So if you had the best in each category, you'd be 15. Um, and now to fill in, you know, this is this is where you get in the nitty gritty. Now to fill in what each of these four, uh, you know, these three categories, the points in each one mean. Um, let's start. Let's say that this is one up here. This would be one point. So one point for eyes, one point for verbal, one point for motor. This top hash mark here. Now, like we said, a score of three, which would be a one, a one, and a one, would be a dead person, right? A deceased person. So all you gotta do to think about what's at the what's at the top there is gonna be um, you know, what a dead person would do. So their eyes would not be open, would be closed, they would not be making any sort of verbal move, uh, you know, noises, any sort of noises at all, and they would not be moving, right? Because that's a dead person. So they'd get a one, one, one. Now, conversely, you know, this, like we said, a 15, which would be a score of four for eyes, a score of five for verbal, and a score of six for motor, that's going to be like a normal person. So for motor, they're going to be moving like a normal, per normal healthy person would. For verbal, they're going to be able to converse with you. And for eyes, their eyes are going to be open, looking around, spontaneous movement is, is the big word. So with that being said, we kind of have the worst here, and we kind of have the best, so now we just need to fill in what's in between. Um, and so, eyes, it's easy because there's only four. So the top one is going to be like a dead person, no eye movement. And the four, the best score you can get is going to be like spontaneous or a living person. So what's a little bit better than uh, being dead? Well, that would be like um, opening your eyes to like extreme pain or only opening your eyes um, you know, in response to like uh, 
really bad stinging lash. So I'm going to put pain. And then what's a little bit worse than having your eyes open, um, you know, just like a normal healthy person? Well, that would be only opening your eyes like when someone's talking to you or when there's moderate, you know, like mild stimuli. So here you can see it's just, it's just like a progression. It's a continuum from being dead and not using your eyes at all to um, being normal, healthy, and having spontaneous eye movement. And now that's, that's very similar for verbal and for motor as well. Whereas, like we said, five is like good verbal like they can converse with you and for motor you know like six it's a six point scale motor is going to be like just being able to move good like move well excuse me and um you know be like a normal person the one is dead and so now we just need to fill in what's in between here um let's see so verbal uh what's a little bit better than being dead it's just kind of like some random noises they're incomprehensible like you know like occasionally you murmur think about like a baby um cooing occasionally that sort of thing like that would be verbal um the next one up is just going to be like inappropriate or um like uh words at, at random times like you think of like a stroke patient or that sort of thing um inappropriate words like uh sentences that don't necessarily make make sense that sort of thing and then what's a little bit what's not perfect but a little bit worse than that is um someone who's talking but just kind of talking like they're a little bit confused it's like they, they don't know exactly where they're at but they're still making good sentences they're still talking they're still um able to converse so i'm going to say kind of like um weird and here you have that continue again everything from dead to perfect normal conversation so you have like the random incomprehensible words you have kind of like the inappropriate like sentences that only make sense you have sentences that make sense but aren't at the right uh you know time kind of like talking about making cookies and then talking about doing something else and then you have um good speech which is like conversing like i'm currently doing right now motor um let's see one two three four five and i missed a ticket here apparently one, two, three, four, five, six. Motor, you know, this is going to have the most options in here, so this is a little bit harder to remember. Um, the big thing is that a score of two for motor is D cerebrate, which we have another video on, but that's abnormal extension. And a score of three is D corticate, which is abnormal flexion. Um, so like if you did like a sternal rub or some sort of painful stimulus in this patient, you know, this patient's just laying there not doing anything. You did this painful stimulus and they did decerebrate or this uh, strange um, characteristic extension of a lot of different muscle groups. That's decerebrate. Decorticate is similarly, you know, in response to a strange painful stimuli, they do abnormal flexion, which is like flexion of the arms and, um, you know, kind of wrapping themselves around the painful stimuli. Um, a score of four is going to be just withdrawal to stimuli. So if you do a sternal rub, um, and they like flinch or they move or they're, you know, they, and they know that it hurts, but they don't know exactly where, and they're not doing one of these characteristic movements. They just kind of flinch a little bit. And then a score of five, which is, again, is just a little bit worse than, um, you know, being totally normal is like, think of, you know, your drunk friend and you do a sternal rub on them. They'll, they'll be with it enough to push your hand away, but they're not moving on their own. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it like localization. Um, and there you can see, you know, look this up, carry this around your, in your uh, coat pocket if you're one of these EMS personnel. But you can see these continuums of one point to four point, one point to five point, one point to six point. The lowest you could have would be a combination of ones, one, 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 which would be dead. Um, the highest would be four, five, and six, which would be 15. Down here on our number line, I put this eight in here because it's kind of widely accepted that a score of eight, you know, which could be any combination of um, points up here, um, that's kind of like the comatose or the severely affected or, you know, the brain injured, that sort of thing. That's, if you have someone call into the ER and they say they have a patient with a GCS of six, you know, just think about the possible combinations. That could be all twos, which would not be, not be looking good. Um, so eight is usually the cutoff. Above eight is, we can work with this, we can treat this, and below eight is not a good sign. Um, Common test questions from this are going to be what's the lowest GCS score you can get, which will be three. And then the other common test question will be what is the GCS score of this patient's um, you know, current clinical scenario? Like 
they'll list off characteristics of the patient and you gotta tell what the score is. Easy thing to remember, the way to do that is just to think um, how close to being dead or how close to being like normal, spontaneous, healthy are they? And you know, if it doesn't see, you know, if their eyes, you're reading it and they're gonna use these tricky words, it doesn't seem like their eyes are dead, they're definitely doing something more than that, then you know that they're not gonna be one. And, but if there seems like there's something wrong with them, then you know they're not gonna be four. So now you're already down to two possible answers for eyes and you just gotta think, well, is that a little bit worse than being totally normal or is that a little bit better than being dead? And uh, you'll get your point total. Obviously it gets a little bit harder here with like six options in motor, but um, work through a few times, check out some examples online and that's an easy way to remember the Glasgow Coma Scale, thanks.